As you know, the Damage Assessment Restoration Program in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, we're involved in going out and assessing vessel groundings whenever they occur within the sanctuary. And over the last 10, 15 years, we've had anywhere between 350 and 700 vessel groundings per year in the sanctuary. When we have a reported vessel grounding, we go out to the site and we assess the injury. And we do our standard ecological assessment methods and we go out and we measure the injury. We measure the length and width of the scars and we count the numbers of corals that were damaged or overturned. And wherever possible, we try to restore that injury. And the first part of the injury process is a thing called triage. And it's a first response, just like triage is with human populations. So what we do is we go out there and we assess the injury and we try to save whatever we can save. And how we do that is by turning corals that have been toppled on their side and turning them right side up. The way we attach them is we find an area that's suitable for the colony to be placed and then we clean that area of any biological fouling. And most of this area has algal turf and a little fine scum of sediment on the top of the dead coral. So we clean that off and the way we do that is we scrape it with a scraper, a paint scraper. We also take wire brushes and we clean it and we get it back down to a fresh limestone surface. And then we'll take Portland cement, bucket of Portland cement, turn it over at the site and let that patty of, of cement form there for a few seconds and then we take the coral and place it the bottom side, dead side down on that Portland cement and we try to smooth out to make a smooth transition between the coral colony and the smooth bottom and it takes anywhere between 12 to 36 hours for the cement to totally cure and it's hard as a rock and it is part of the reef. We've been monitoring, you know, how successful are we in, re in these corals that we've reattached. So along with the transplantation project or the relocation project, we also monitor each one of those corals that we've, we've, we've reattached there. And in some cases, if we had thousands of corals, we wouldn't want to count all thousand corals to see how they're doing. But what we've done is we've actually made a map, uh, a base map, with all the corals that we've transplanted and have that map and now we can go out in the field we have this map that's rectified with GIS coordinates and we can go out and know that that coral is the coral that we reattached on such and such a date and this is the species and this is the size of it we can actually see it through time whether it's going to grow whether it's going to die or stay the same and what we found is so far we've had greater than 97 percent success on these transplanted corals. We're mandated by Congress through the Sanctuary Preservation Act to basically restore any injured resource where practicable. And in this case, this is a practical injury. We can go out, we can physically see the damage that an injury that was caused by the vessel drowning. And in many cases, we can get out there quickly and reattach and right these corals that were toppled in the injury and fix it, and fix it quickly. And in many cases, we've even found with smaller vessel groundings that we can do almost all of the restoration in this triage phase. These are the exciting things that we feel that we're doing to uh, enhance the resource within the sanctuary.